Let me ask you this. YouTube, YouTube demonetized 50% of creators' videos overnight. Mm -hmm. is, is this is this documented? Is this a source for this? Yeah. That seems like a lot. Yeah, that's a hell of a, that's a bunch in a gut. That seems like a lot. I want to make sure that we have the correct information. If not, blame it on me. Take all, take all, mitigate all risks, <laughs> take all liabilities, but provide the asset. Big while, lesson. While we're, while we're looking for cross reference this, YouTube, what so YouTube is demonetizing videos left and right. Mm -hmm. Um okay. As the music industry is paying less, um, so if you curse in the first eight seconds of your video. Um, then they, since inception, they're going to go and demonetize your video. Um, because, of course, if advertisers have less money to spend, they want cleaner content. This is why I curse less here as well. Um, Thank, you. Thank you. No, I'm joking. No, I'm happy to. <laughs> um, so they need cleaner content to run ads against. And it's a sign of a recession. Google stock is still down. Um, but I hate the entire sponsorship pay per view, click per stream model anyway. Um, so in some parts of it, I love, because I've always told everyone, if you don't build a real business around the content or have a product or service to sell against that viewership, you're in trouble anyway. Um, so I think in this era, people are going to learn you have to build a more sustainable business. Yes, I think Mr. Beast built an amazing model that is very hard to be replicated. And now he's spending $20 million on production. And I think that's incredible, right? Most people can't do that. And also by the time you hear of a Mr. Beast at the time, Pootie Pie was the hottest thing on earth. And then he got surpassed. You always have to look for the next thing. Number two, you have to look for a business model that even if you have low viewership is able to produce high revenue. I can argue there's probably 7,000 shows to get more views than this. I can guarantee you there isn't 10 y'all can name to make more money than this show. Number three, stop relying on platforms to make you rich. It is only their job to make their shareholders and their families rich from that product. You're going to see this happen too on Instagram, Meta, even for reels, like all that. They want you to get 200,000 views to get a $700 payout. I'm like, what? Why? I'll just go, go get me 15 girls off OnlyFans. Like, comment, subscribe for more and be done and make way more money. It is Fibonacci girls coming 2023. Probably next week. My guy hit me. Let's make that happen. Stop depending on platforms to make you rich. That is not their job to do so. When most of these tech companies cannot make themselves rich. Like if we have a real conversation about taking out large scale venture capital investments into most of these companies, most of them will not be able to generate billions of dollars. And some of them are making billions of dollars and still at a loss. Snapchat at a loss. Everyone put in chat, what are like five of the biggest tech companies that are negative in revenue the last three years, but they're publicly traded? Got to be careful. Please be careful. The content game is a, another Ponzi scheme too. I'm beat. They got y'all making, even here, 4K, great. And you sell your whole, oh, let's talk about Linza and AI. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. I had that app five years ago, right? If you go through the terms and service, because I know everyone's saying, well, if you're an artist, you can take the AI to make more art, to sell your art. Here's the crazy part. Any photo or derivative, that's what I have you load up, 15 of them. They are able to sell all of your creations that you put into their site in perpetuity, plus the lifetime of your children without you making any money off of that. Talk about a hell of a business model. Like, so let's talk about let's, let's talk about AI. What what are the two most promising features of AI that all entrepreneurs should implement in their business? Before you do that, can I just clean up the the YouTube thing? So yes, there was can. some demonetization happening. It was really focused on gamers, and they were looking at gaming content. As a result, the policy is taking issue with the violence depicted in some video games and more broadly, and so they they're losing graphic. Video games that depict graphic and dead bodies in a non-educational video and ultra graphic violent acts, including those involving law enforcement and injuries. So I'm thinking like when people are going on YouTube, Call of Duty is one of those. Uh, That's uh, slippery because that even Fortnite. Yeah, that's right. So there's even all these videos that depict that. But they, there's also a new policy, and I would I suggest that people read it, um, that they how the demonetization is going to happen starting in, uh, well, it started 
at the end of, of last year. So uh, profanity, it, the rules have changed, um, and obviously language and thumbnails. Thumbnails are important to the viewership of videos. Mm -hmm. And so there's a whole new thumbnails and, and titles and videos containing any adult links, obscene language, adult material, any sexually graphic acts um, are not going to receive revenue. There's a whole list. And may, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll screenshot this and put this in, and we'll put this up in a story or something like that. so people. Or let's put it to the group text. Oh, we can just do that. Oh, we can do that as well. Yeah. Yeah, but it's good. And, and, and if you're a content creator, you should know these things. I know everybody doesn't read the rules and regulations or the terms, but it says it in here. And so if you're looking at your videos and wondering why sometimes it's limited or not available for monetization, they obviously have, have changed the rules a little bit. So good to know. All right, but go ahead, man. All right. AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, okay. This is here. Mm -hmm. And I will say that shout out to 19 Keys. He gave us a dope, um, he gave us a dope walkthrough. I actually set up a, a, a Zoom call with the team, with Earn Your Leisure's team and his team to give us um, best practices of how he's actually been using artificial intelligence. Yep. And I won't, I won't say everything, um, but he definitely gave us some really dope insight on things that I wasn't aware of as far as how you can have articles written for you. Mm-hmm how you can have um, titles written for you, you yep. know, um, thumbnails, different things of that nature made for you. Uh, it was actually very impressive and it was very interesting, um, especially from a journalistic standpoint. I was yes. very impressed with, with the technology of how it, how it was writing articles. Um, so I see a lot of benefit mm -hmm. from there, especially. And I'm sure a variety of other different things, but that's just the firsthand experience that, you know, that happened pretty recently. Um, so what's your thoughts on artificial intelligence? I think two sides of a great, I was having a uh, conversation with Keys on live. I think the number one thing that Elon needs to do with chat GPT is to have a paid subscription for the top 10,000 influencers to have chat GPT create all of their tweeted content to make it go viral. Um, since now he's can, up the, can, you, can you can you tell the people what chat GBT is it is a um, AI company that allows you to write articles headlines scripts even if you want to like do outlines for shows like I, we're going to see way more investing content the top 10 lessons you need to learn on investing from chat GPT right so it, t it aggregates all the information and it writes um, articles and information out for you I think is great but even at the core of it a lot of what is missing is soul and heart. So you can have a list of 10 things, but if you don't have real life experience with it, it's not going to hit the same. Um, but if Elon, of course, bought Twitter and he is an investor in chat GPT, it would be a great arbitrage play to tell influencers, hey, Instagram is dying slowly. Um, now use this and pay us a thousand a month or 3,000 a year, and we'll write all of your tweets for you and allow you to go viral and get more reach and have AI do it for you. That is a win. At some point, that will be put into Tesla software, and I think will be a great advantage there. And, I, and it, will, it will allow you to scale. The thing that it will not give you, go ahead. No, I was going to say, it, it's interesting because the same things in the flaws that you're saying, they're aware of it. Mm -hmm. So there was an article in the Wall Street Journal about um, chat GPT. I know some people are like, what was the letters? G uh, P T. They actually took a survey of what people were saying about how the platform is performing. And one of the things that they said is like, even when it's automated, right? So it's a language, it, it actually uh, optimizes language for you. It doesn't have an authentic feel to it. It still yep. feels a little bit robotic. So a lot of people were creating their resumes on there. And it was, it was I mean, it was crisp, but it didn't have authentic mm -hmm. stories from it. It was just whatever you told it. And so their thing was like, okay, we're going to go back now. And our new venture is how do we add that component to it? And so they already know the flaws and they're like, all right, let's fix them before the, the general. Because I, I feel like even now there's a majority of the population probably doesn't know what it is yet. Yeah. But they will shortly. Right. Because it's, it's one of those things. And I think the most valuable thing and kind of what we saw was like how it allows you to get back your time. Mm -hmm. Right. Rather than writing an article, you can dictate a, a sentence and it can create a four page article for you, mm -hmm. which obviously takes back a lot of time for you from, from, from an automation standpoint. So it's interesting. They're very aware of the flaws and they're like the same thing that you just said. And I, and I was like, wow, that's crazy that you said it. Cause the article was based on that. Like they know what the performance flaws are. They're working yeah. on them right now to update them. Which makes it a, a easy acquisition talk. Cause it's really an SEO game. 
it makes it a good target for Google to buy it. And even with that, like I always say, when everyone was talking crypto and NFT, no one was talking automation. When I told everyone by 2030, they want to have all jobs automated, 25% off of human beings. So look ahead, because the thing that they're pushing to you is not the next wave. Like by the time they're pushing it to you in your face, they already are working on something else. I think it does give you scale. But let's say hypothetically you make a show and you call it Market Mondays Part 2 and you write all of your content in chat GPT. What is stopping Google from taking all the information, seeing the data, the analytics from that show, and then going to create that against you with actual artificial intelligence? Because that's not really AI a scale. That's like the consumer version. Now, the B2B and b 2 government is different and way more robust. My fear, as I illustrated with Linza, a lot of people are going to try to build their businesses off of automation. And guess what? Because you haven't read terms of service, they have rights to all of your information and data and can they can now take your information in aggregate and use it against you to put you out of business. And guess what? There's nothing you can do about it. But you're going to sue Google. You're going to sue Elon. Does not work. Automation is key. But if you are not building some of your own proprietary software to keep that data in house, that's why like I never farm out when it's time for me to call the numbers for where to invest. I never farmed that out because I don't want it to get stolen or sold off. If you're putting your best ideas up on these platforms and they're charging you $300 a year, as we've seen with GameStop and Robinhood, when they're selling that data, who are they taking that data and selling it to? Why wouldn't Spotify come to Jet, Chat GPT and say, hey, I'll give you $100 million for every lyric song that was written in there. And then if I get the AI robot to actually work, then it doesn't look like a buffoon. And I make this go crazy. And we create a digital bad bunny with all y'all writing y'all songs in here. It's over with. You can call me a conspiracy theorist. But I've not been wrong. Voice. They, they take the voice too. Just automate the whole voiceover. Yep. At scale. Wow. It's robbery season right now, man. If y'all not paying attention, whew, this era is going to produce people that make 50 and 80 and $100 million in like four or five years. And then there's going to be a class of people who are just like broken destitute. What side of the coin are you going to be on? Are you going to get rich and wealthy in this era, era from this information? Or are you going to sit on the sidelines and complain? You got to pick. Information locks doors. This, this day. Red Panda Anthem. Ian, what's up? This day. Red Panda Anthem. Red Panda, what's this good? Day. Red Panda Anthem. <laughs> Your boy. Going up. I know they can't stand it.